when I'm not demanding transparency from the corrupt Grammy Award Committee for snubbing the Emerald Riders for Album of the Year. I like to answer questions from comments I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Sean, when you play acoustic guitar live, do you use compression, or is that why you palm mute to equal the strings out? Great question, and getting a good live acoustic guitar sound is something I have struggled with over a long time. And what I have ended up learning is it's all kind of contextual, which is always the answer nobody wants to hear, but that is the answer that it actually is, right? So some people use like a pedal board. I really just plug in right to the Bose Tone Match Mixer that I use with my L1S system, and it has everything that I would ever need. But the only thing that I ever really use is reverb for the most part, okay? So when you think about like your live guitar sound and kind of like the spirit of this question, whether like using open chords versus palm muting, why that's important is because when usually you're in a system where you kind of have to monitor yourself, and that's why I like the Bose stuff because it has the tower and you can usually self monitor with the same speaker that is projecting into an audience up to, you know, you know the, it, it works for, you know, a few hundred people, I would say that system. Uh, you'll get feedback. Even the bow stuff, which is the best at kind of like feedback protection, if you play big open chords with a lot of sustain and like open notes ringing out with like fretted notes, you're more likely to feedback with an acoustic guitar, depending on the acoustic guitar. One reason I think I'll probably go to the Fender Acoustic Sonic when I go back to playing live shows, whenever that's gonna be. But uh, yeah, in the past, I've actually kind of shied away from using big open chords most of the time and then really kind of evened the dynamics with palm muting. So again, what that does is like, if I'm playing something like with a C major chord, instead of being like. Something like that has, uh, you have less control over the open strings where if you play like a C major bar chord. Or if you palm mute. There's a huge dynamic uh, that you're missing from just the big open stuff that you're really controlling everything, right? So all the dynamic is really in your hands at that point. So that's why palm muting has become such a huge part of my playing just from playing live all the time and trying to get the best sound with the best projection with the least amount of feedback, okay? Now your answer or your question about a compressor pedal is also something that's very interesting. The only time I'll ever use the compressor on the Bose Tone Match is if I'm playing fingerstyle stuff, right? So again, like maybe if I'm playing something like, right, I'm kind of digging into the strings right there. I don't know how well you can hear it in this microphone, but but that that sound versus is is a huge difference, right? And uh, also too, you know, once you're really kind of like trying to hear yourself and digging into the strings more, it's you tend to, or at least I tend to have a much less even playing style. So if I know I'm gonna be doing finger style stuff, then I'll turn the compressor on. Because like I said, it does, like the question said, it does even the sound out a little bit. But most of the time it's really just a little bit of reverb, a tasteful amount of reverb, and that's it. And since most of the stuff that I do is like acoustic duo or solo stuff, uh, I don't really feel the need to really EQ much at all, other than taking a lot of the highs out of the acoustic guitar, just because I think most acoustic guitar pickup systems are, are way too bright for my liking. So again, I'll EQ some of the highs out. A lot of times you can do that on the guitar pickup system itself. Uh, if not, you can do that in like a mixer. Uh, the tone match is what I use. Just take some of the highs out and maybe even boost some of like the mids to low mids. I usually feel like you can get away with that. And I think that sounds pretty good live. So if you're thinking about maybe building a small acoustic pedal board or something for whatever your, you know, whatever your needs are, compressor is a must have if you're a finger style player. Uh, EQ is definitely great to have uh, just because, you know, that's another way that you can eliminate feedback too. And then just having like a good reverb that isn't just too over the top, I think is like really the only three things that you would for sure need. Uh, and again, depending on how you, you play, Really, reverb is most of the only thing I'm ever running at one time. So check that out and then just keep playing. Hey, Sean, not sure if anyone's already asked, but have you considered putting up some original song tutorials on the Patreon? I know there are a couple on your channel, but it would be so cool to learn some more. I would love to. So if you haven't checked out my Patreon, basically it's nearing a hundred different lessons and they're all in kind of sequential order, or they're just a bunch of song lessons, which I usually don't teach a lot of song lessons on this channel. But 
We just released a acoustic version of a song called Juliana that me, Andre, and Pasha did that I think turned out really cool, so you can stream that. I'll link that too. And I also just posted a lesson on it on my Patreon. And the cool thing about that, aside from just being like, oh, here, learn one of my songs, I feel like that's a great way for me to talk about just how I was thinking and like how I arranged a song. And I, it goes into the theory a lot. And I think the song lessons are just kind of great because it's a great way to touch base on like a lot of different things without having like one main theme. Usually in the lessons I put on the YouTube thing, I try to have like one main theme that I tackle like a bunch of things in. But the great thing about the songs is you can like kind of jump around a little bit and there's like a lot of like real world applicable uh, information. And yeah, teaching some of my own songs, you know, is just kind of like also a songwriting lesson too. So definitely if you're interested in any of that stuff, it's, it's super affordable, I think compared to like actually taking in-person lessons. And there's like a ton of stuff. So definitely check that out. Oh my gosh, this title made me laugh out loud. So this is from the video, Seven Bangtan Boys Had Their Way With Me. <laughs> Which I think is probably one of the funnier videos I've posted on this channel in a long time. Uh, me and Andrea decided to stay up throughout the entire night because the new BTS album came out. Uh, they're a K-pop band, if you're not familiar with them. Potentially the biggest band in the world right now. Which is funny because of how niche these different genres are. Like, the biggest band in the world can be totally unknown to other people. But basically, they released this album at midnight, and we stayed up and taught it over on her channel throughout the entire night. So it's probably the most K-pop I've heard in a long time. Not that I am not super into K-pop. The funny thing about that is that, apparently, in the language they're singing in, the word you is... Nega, right? So whenever they're singing that in context, they'll say it and I'll be like, wait, what did they just say? And that took some getting used to hearing them say that. It <laughs> seemed wildly inappropriate. But uh, definitely check that out because it's a super funny video. You'll see me just kind of like lose my mind by the end of it being up all night learning K-pop songs. So uh, I'll link that in the description because it's definitely worth a watch. I never tire of the box opening carnage. If you hadn't guessed, this was a comment on one of the videos with Andrea threatening my life with a a box opening of sort. So I thought I'd have you as a special guest to open a couple boxes I just got from uh, Hosa. I feel so honored. Mm -hmm. So let's see what the good people at Hosa sent over. I have no idea what's in here. I'm assuming they're cables of some sort because that's what Hosa is known for. Dude, I don't oh, even know. Oh, what the wow. Hosa is. I know, I learned to cut away from myself. Which is. And towards Sean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, you can. You don't have to stop at the cutting. Yep. Yep. So just. Oh. There we. There we go. All right. Here, I'm gonna start. You open the next box while I start. Why are you doing the unboxing? And I'm doing. Whoop, I don't even know. I have the Hosa Pro Series XLRs. Seriously, so I have the people at Hosa. They saw that I had a new studio desk and stuff, and they're like, "Hey." Definitely use these new Pro Series connections for your monitors. So they sent me some TRS cables and some XLRs and then some Edge guitar instrument cables. How cool is that? That's awesome. I have no idea what it's for, but thank you. It is just Hosa? guitar instrument cables and then XLR, which are like microphone cables. I can hook my speakers up to my interface. So that's awesome. I'm trying so hard. I like this unboxing because the unboxing is more difficult. It's a challenge, right? There we go. Look at all these little use... mini boxes within mini boxes. I used to get I get to use oh, my nice. unboxing ability to scare everybody. The Hosa Microphone Edge XLRs. These are for like microphones and stuff. Dude, what is this? I think the Edge series is like their top of the line stuff. I don't know. I guess we have to open it up to find out. Oh my gosh, I'm opening these too? Yeah. Are you using all these in an upcoming video or something? I don't know. Well, I'm just or using just these as just part of my day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, so you know. I, ne I never have enough cables. Ever. Seriously? And you see there's like a mess like of a cables million, around here. But I'm always oh like gosh, looking for certain care. types of things. Whoa, like, what's this? The tape Oh, these are like ties? You can like, like Velcro ties? Guitar cables? Oh my gosh, I love it. Ah, the people at Hosa. Guitar maintenance, Gobi. Guitar maintenance labs. You can kind of like polish your guitars and condition your fretboard. Mm -hmm. I feel like you've never done that. What well, I do it all the time. I feel like but I then should. I ran out of Hosa Gobi stuff. And now you can go get back into the polishing. Mm -hmm. Microphone sanitizer, screen cleaner. That's even more helpful because of Corona. Yeah. Uh -huh. I want to spread 
COVID throughout us singers. You know. Oh. So yeah, if you're thinking about maybe like an inexpensive gift for a guitar player, stuff like this, like these Gobi Labs things that they sell to like, you know, clean your instrument and condition the fretboard is something anybody could use, but as like, I hardly ever think of it. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, because we know that you don't clean your don't guitar need, that much. But, it's that. but uh, thank you for <laughs> helping us unbox some of this. Thank you, guys. Sean, I've absolutely no doubt you're a great guitarist, but as a teacher, you're a dead loss. <laughs> a dead loss. <laughs> That's rough. That's like one of those uh, sweet and sour comments. They're like, oh, you're a great guitarist. Oh, why, why thank you. But as a teacher, you're awful. So awful, you're a dead loss. So, you know, whatever. I'll just uh, I'll just stop reading comments like that after the first part, and now that I've learned my lesson. Tis a beginner flute. Sound is not nearly as good as a real, more professional one. This on a demo I did on like a $15 pan flute. Shocking that someone who doesn't know how to play flute can't make a cheap Chinese flute sound as good as a professional playing a real flute. I know, but I guess I failed on that one too. So for listening homework, we're going to the clubhouse leaders in listening homework mentions, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, who always make me feel like such a chump for not releasing more because they just keep putting out just banger album after banger album. So this one is no exception. Awesome, makes me want to get a microtonal acoustic instrument. Uh, so check out King Gizzard because they're just nasty. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.